going to have the board of directors meeting at 4801 Lakeside Club Boulevard, Fort Myers, Florida. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Okay, we had a couple of our uh, residents pass away this past month, Paul oh. Neck and Mary Dick, so we'd like to have a moment of silence for them, please. May they rest in peace. Okay, uh, John Roll Call. Janet Mirando. Okay. She's absent. absent. I make sure. Kendra O. Here. John Fricker. Here. Scott Harris. Here. Mike Lalan. He's absent. Isabel Costanzo. Here. And Phil Schifano is also absent. Was this uh, meeting properly noticed? Yes, it was. Thank you. Okay, so. What do we got on the open floor? Just one little circle. Uh, Debbie? Titan. Titan. I want to start out by thanking the board for the responsiveness. So in my comments, I do want you to know that I recognize your hard efforts. Uh, I wanted to speak in regards to the condition of the pool. Uh, I had brought this up last year. Um, the bottom of the pool uh, looks horrific. It is one of the centerpieces of the community. Um, I did speak with Eric, who had informed me that there is a budget line for it. However, the budget line for it is a 15-year plan. Having said that, <coughs> We're probably three years into it looking poorly, and the budget line uh, is waiting another five years before it will be addressed. Um, I would strongly encourage the board to look at expediting that process and to look at creating a budget line that is much less than 15 years, given the amount of usage that it has. Uh, in addition to which, perhaps we need to explore uh, different resurfacing or whatever, uh, but I do find it to be such a valuable piece of our community and used by so many. So I would just encourage you to address that and do something before the next five years. Thank you. Um, Eric, maybe you could address that. You know, it's been, the pool's been like that for like about three years now, and I know that you looked into uh, what we could do about it. So maybe you it, it, it may have been it may have been like that longer. Than about three years ago, we talked about it, and the solution that was proposed to us was to drain the pool and to acid wash the uh, marsh siding to clean that black stuff up. There's no guarantee that it would work or not, um, but that was the guidance that we were given. So. We weigh the pros and cons. The health department checks it twice a year. Um, it's not an algae or a growth or anything like that that causes any type of harm. It's just uh, cosmetic, which um, I agree with that. It does not look good. Um, but I do think you have to be looking for it really to notice it because everything is so nice out there. The board at the time, which uh, we don't have to totally the same board now that some of the members were on it, um, decided that it wasn't worth closing down the pool for the better part of a month over the summer and uh, draining it and, and doing that when people have vacations and people come down and things like that and the pool is a main attraction. So closing it and taking it away, at least without giving extreme advance notice to everybody, um, wasn't something that we decided was the best thing to do at the time. 
Did we ever look at the uh, chemically treating that without draining it? I know that yeah, there was a strong chemical that um, was suggested, and they were going to get the name for us, but I didn't know if that was what we wanted to do either. Was put you know super strong chemicals in there. Well, I mean that would be just temporary. Yeah, almost like shocking it. Yeah, so we could check into that again. That would be the easiest way, and probably the less cost. Yeah, well, it's, it's going to work. Let's look into it. May I just say one more thing? I, I appreciate the efforts on that. Uh, but again, uh, even having it on a budget line for 15 years is an inadequate way to deal with it. It needs to be done sooner than 15 years. So whatever it is, um, there may be other things of resurfacing or whatever that could be done. Uh, because again... Well, just to, to clarify, the 15-year schedule, um, if that's what I, I'm pretty sure if you remember, because uh, we spoke that's given to us by the reserve study specialists that they say it's supposed to last 15 years. It's not a, not a time picked out of thin air. So um, while the board has the authority to change that and move it up, that's the reason why the number is. I, I understand. I just think we need yeah. to adjust it. Well, I mean, if we could find something to treat it chemically, then that, that would be done pretty fast, right? As long as it works, yeah. Yeah, as long as it works. Okay, so we got Jolene Porter. Okay, so we love how we don't have carpet in our hallways of the condos anymore. But, but under the stairs, they were not able to make the floors level. So now we have a continual puddle. And if we have a large range, that puddle is going to seep into my living room. We used to have the carpet would soak up the puddle and turn it into mold, which wasn't good. But now I don't have a level floor, so call now me. I have a big puddle. Call me the next time the puddle's there and I'll come over. It's there all the time. Okay, so I'll come over. And I'm not and I'm not the only one that has a puddle. I know there's other people that have said they have a puddle where they couldn't make it from totally flush, totally level, yeah. whatever you want to say. Sorry, I'll come see the puddle. I, okay. I haven't noticed any in the hallways. Yeah, been, but... I mean, it's little right at the moment, but when we get a big rain, it's a big puddle, but it's always there. There's always water in it. It doesn't ever dry up. Well, when you say under the stairs, it's on the main floor? Yeah, on the bottom floor. In that, in that, right under, right next to my, my living room walls. There's a puddle. It has been ever since they were there. Ever since they put it together. I'm never here anymore, so I can't say anything. John Moe? Moa? What is it, John? What's your last name? <laughs> he didn't he didn't write it down very well. Now, now, now. Now? All right. Now, now, now. That may you. It's not like a foul in basketball? No. Right. You know, you, you're from Long Island. <laughs> no, I'm not from Long Island. I'm from Queens. That's not Long Island. Oh, don't tell everybody that. Yeah. Hi, my name's John Mao. I live at 9620 Villa Drive. First, I want to thank you guys for volunteering and being on the board. Um, I'm here to, well, I'd like to speak about Debbie Kynan's problem with the pool and all of the other people that go into that pool. There is a way to get a high pressure hose down into the pool and actually spray off that using a different nozzle to take that black off. So if you are willing to do that, we'd all love that. Um, How do you know that? <laughs> you, can you show him? I, I, Is there a I, company I, that does that? Uh, I, I can't tell you that down here. I, I'm from, I'm not from Queens, but I'm from New York. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm from Yankee Lake. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a uh, So uh, I, I'm here to talk about uh, security. All right, so you're going to let, you're going to find out some information for uh, Eric, right? Are you? Yeah, you can call your friends up in the New York. No, no, I'm just an easy guy. Okay, so now you're going to talk about safety and security. Yes. We're only, charged, we're only in charge of uh, safety. Yeah. 
I've already Someone's been going around all the communities. I noticed that my dad lives there as well. So this morning, uh, I was getting ready to go back down to the pool, and uh, I had a young. <laughs> crackhead that was delivering these to all of our villas and putting them on the fence. So I stopped him and I said, does anything happen in community just down the street? I know that. So they're making rounds. Oh, I, I don't know. I haven't visited recently. But uh, so what happened was he followed somebody in at the gate and he was putting them in everybody's. So I approached him. And I grabbed him and I said, come on, let's go. We're going down to management. Oh, you did? Because that's the Okay, good. I've done this one other time before. So, uh, um, so uh, I brought him down. Eric wasn't here. Uh, actually, Bruce, the, the uh, head maintenance guy, he escorted him off the property. But, uh, you know, just bringing those in, that doesn't mean that they're really doing that. They could be in here casing everybody's property and checking to see who they can burglarize. So well, they're right here on Palm Beach Boulevard. I'll go personally see the owner if I need to and tell them that they're trespassing and he's the one liable if he's um, authorizing this because there's no soliciting that's supposed to all over the place up front. And, and I had told the young man in a polite way that uh, he wasn't allowed in here unless he had the the uh, management's uh, Authorization, which so, you would never, you would never have. Right, and so it, that's what I. I if I, this I, is legitimate, um, that's a pretty big breach by that company to go in and do that. Well, Especially, it's uh, Xfinity prepaid. We we have. Well, Xfinity, it's it's you know? it's boost. It's boost. Xfinity. Yeah, so but it's, um, they're using that name to try and make it. So uh, also, um, our prison security. We need to look at their present hours. We should be looking for a 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. security guards. We're going to address that in the president's report today. I'm sorry. So I think we should be more concerned about the perimeters because, you know, everybody is driving up and down the streets almost all night or at least until 9.30 when the moose closes. So, uh, you know, I really think it should be the perimeters that we should be looking at. And we really don't need them supervising bingo, coming here four times a night, supervising the pool or the parties that are out back. Once it's time, everybody's a resident. They know what time they have to go home. Um, we also need to look at with the, the price of our security cameras are now at the lowest price ever. And now with the uh, high definition, I would hope that the board would take a look at that. And, you know, we should be concerned about down by the trailer park and the development. That's where mainly you're going to have your, your uh, trespassers come in. So we really need to take a look at that. Um, I know that we all try to do our job and we, as residents and we, all, and we try to control anybody that's not coming in. But uh, we had one resident that uh, is over there on Green Cypress Lakeside. And uh, he went down to the lake and told two of the kids that were not residents, that they couldn't be here, they were trespassing. So obviously the kids walked around the lake and jumped wherever they were gonna jump out, but they watched the, the resident go back to his home. Later on that day, they actually went up and started kicking on their front door. So, I, I, you know, it's just, we, we really need to do something else with the security. From, from 6 o'clock at night to, to 12.30 is not it. You need to do 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. What time did that kick in? I, I, all I can tell you is that I, have, I, I do not know that. So I'm sure that there'll be other people that can uh, expound on that. But uh, again, thank you for volunteering. We appreciate your time and uh, please, Everybody here is looking for security. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, uh, reading and approving of the previous uh, meeting.
meeting minutes. Uh, I move that we waive the reading of the minutes. I had my name on. I had my name on. Oh, oh did you? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I see. I'm sorry. Kathy <laughs> England. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hello, I am Kathy England, and I am subbing for my husband Bill tonight. <laughs> uh, first thing is the roof and ridge vents that were supposed to have been addressed in 4761 Lakeside. Were they ever addressed? Because they were not put back in after the roofing two years ago. I think you're referring to the inspection we did after with tar paper at the ridge wasn't cut all the way through? There's no vents. There's nothing, because, you know, before there were vents in the ridge. There's, there are ridge vents. There are sections where they didn't cut the paper, so it's not ventilating. It's not and ventilated. that's an issue that still needs to be resolved. Yeah, okay, that's, that's what we need. The roof is installed with a ridge vent. There's, okay. there's, Florida has a, has a building code and it's uh, permitted and inspected by the county. Everything has to be done according to Florida's building code, so we there's, can't not do that. There's no ventilation, I know, in our court. It's a different type of vent that was used uh, previously, and people generally like this one because you can shingle over it and you don't really notice it as much and it looks better, or a lot of people think it looks better, I guess, <laughs> the eye of the holder. But um, it's basically like a uh, like a mesh that they roll out across the ridge, and then they cap it with those sh shingle caps. And um, and every building has it. Whether or not it's ventilating it properly is, is is a different issue that's it's, still uh, still ongoing. Yeah, yeah, because I mean we can tell a big difference in ours where we're second floor. So I don't know whether with the heat. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Second, the potholes that are on the road coming into the residence. Yeah, we already called the county on that. They okay. have work order on it. Okay. And they said they would get to it as soon as possible, but that doesn't mean tomorrow. We have been gone for about a week prior to getting a few more callers. Several of the chairs at the pool probably are going to need redone. They're very thin. Yeah, they are actually currently being redone. Uh, we have a dozen and a half about at the shop, the upholstery shop complete that we have to go pick up and then we're going to bring the next batch, next batch. over. Okay. And we still have the fabric from last year. We bought the big roll of fabric to redo the ones that we needed to do last year. So um, all we're having to do is pay for the upholstery shop to do the sewing and installing. How often are they supposed to be cleaning? <clears throat> How often are they supposed to be cleaning? The cleaning crews. Oh, there's a calendar. If you um, want to know the date of your building, we have in the office, I can tell you. But it's uh, basically <coughs> like two to three times a month. Is what, and they're here every day. Four, they're here four days a week, the fifth day being like a rain makeup day. Um, I know the cleaning we doesn't take nearly as much now because we've eliminated the vacuuming part of it, which was the most time consuming. So um, we've set a new procedure um, and as that gets implemented, you know what I mean? It's a, we'll give him more than one week to, to get good at it. But uh, we set a new procedure with how he needs to do it and um, doors, handrails, walls, all that stuff needs to be wiped down. The uh, floors itself will be cleaned. We're still going to say it's quarterly or biannually, um, where it's a where it's a full cleaning, where we scrub the scrub the stairs mm -hmm. down. But um, I know we've you know, been back really spot since yeah. the last weekend in September, mm -hmm. and the bugs are still around our doors, the window. Nothing's changed. Well, I can tell you the day that he cleans your building, and then we can check it right after. Okay. You know, that's the best thing. That'd probably be the best thing. Yeah, that's, the uh, bugs are that's still... That's what I've been doing. With, yeah, um, they're still right where they were when we came in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, dear. Thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, one thing with the cleaning, I had a guy who got a call that he didn't clean at all, and 
They walk down the stairs, the handrail, and their hands are totally brown and dirty. So I go over there and I check it, and I have my hand, and my hands come back clean. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe that person cleaned it. I don't think so, though, because they sounded like they wanted us to clean it still. So um, I don't know. If yours might be scheduled for tomorrow. And it'll okay. be the 13th day. I don't know. I don't have a calendar in the office. But um, we can uh, look at it the day. Uh, I, I was just wondering, because yes. like I said, the bugs are still. Right. There's nothing if you're not, if you're not doing it, then that's a problem. Okay. But, if it's the 13th day and the 13 days of bugs, then it's got to make sense, you know? It's been 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. Vicki Front, well, Ransom, just, I'm on here, so you're what's your name? Michelle Locke, Michelle Locke. Okay, gotcha. Right. <laughs> uh, two things. I wanted to ask if Eric can address the Comcast canceling of Turner Classic Movies and adding that to the sports channel. That's pretty discriminatory against older women who are not married, who don't get the sports channel. Yeah, I'm not. No, 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 but just ask me if you can work with them. I didn't say it was your fault. Uh, I'm sure just about everybody in this room, since everybody's a Comcast customer, has dealt with Comcast and their customer service, and, and um, you know, I'd be happy to work with them to get the channel back. Yes, uh, please. They are not willing to work with us. <laughs> uh, yeah. we, we signed a contract uh, six years. Six years we signed a contract. The community overwhelmingly wanted Comcast, and you know the co the company is so, so monolithic. Yeah, we want to change the contract. They tell us no. Take it or leave it. Um, we were lucky to get that little bit of money up front. Uh, they tried to resend that. Um, they even messed with us the first month. So it's um, we knew what we were signing up for. This is yeah. They had a this, list though. They gave us a list of what was included. right, right. But it's not guaranteed forever. Those channels are going to have the right to change them. And but you'll see if you can. Yeah, I mean, I got, I've already asked. They won't do it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's way up the corporate ladder. Yeah, it's uh, it's way up the corporate ladder. Basically, what probably happened is Turner raised the prices on Comcast, and Comcast said, "Well, we're so charging for it, you're going to have this many less subscribers, so you're going to be able to sell your advertising." And it might be back and forth, and one day Turner is back on. But I would love to take credit for that. If it, if it does come back, right, it would, have, it would have nothing to do with me. I don't know. <laughs> Welcome back, Scott. We haven't had a landscape committee meeting for a while. And I and another member of the committee wanted to ask if we could switch it to another day because it happens to fall on the same day as the ladies' luncheon, which is once a month also. Well, we had a meeting. But, oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. But I'll get to that in a little bit and I'll also get we switch the day. Okay. Thank you. So, because I know I heard that somebody yeah. had a uh, conflict, so we just thank you. Yeah, that. Okay, Vicki, uh, Vicki, 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 and we did power wash it and was able to get all the surface stuff off. Power with the water in the pool? Yes. You just need to have, like John said, a strong power washer with the correct nozzle, and they can do it without shutting down the pool. And I, well, you just have to shut it down because you have to cycle that. Whatever. Well, but I mean, it wouldn't be for a month. It yeah. would only be for a day or two. Right. Which, especially if it's done in the summer for us that live here all year. Right. I just recently relocated down here for good. And since I've been down here, um, back first back to the pool, there are a lot of 
surface tiles on the edge that are cracked that need replaced. And some of them are even spreading to where you can stick something in there. So I don't know what your options are with that. Yeah, uh, if you could write up, write up something that shows me, that tells me where you see the spots, because that's normally some of the health department where we had to replace many okay. times because of that. Yeah. I'm surprised that that would be there without uh, us getting in trouble. Is that a Title 89 on this side? There, a lot of them are down on the three foot end. Because that's the end no, of most serious. action. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm serious. Place. It's down yeah. over on that side. Okay. We know because of where we put the volleyball yeah. suction cups, and we can't suction cup on one with a crack. No. Okay. Um, my husband and I purchased here over a year ago. Love the place, love the community and everybody. We just bought a villa in July, and unfortunately he passed away a month later. The day after we bought the villa, I put in an order because my downspout in my front patio is not being directed out to the parking lot. So every time it rains, and it is going into my landscaping. I have dirt everywhere, and I have about two and a half inches of water to walk through beside my garage to get out to my car if I'm not going into the garage. Three times I've submitted that, and nothing's been done. You said you submitted in January? No, I, in July. In July. I've also twice have submitted for the tree behind me because I am backing up to the tennis courts to be trimmed. They're overhanging my house. They are... We did a lot of heavy trimming over there. None of, none of those trees back there have been trimmed since I put these orders in. Yeah, and but we had just trimmed them previously. We were only allowed to go back so much on certain trees. <coughs> well, Eric, it's hanging clear over my roof. Now, two weeks ago, when we had these high winds, there was a couple branches that almost came through my screen. Now, that happens, I'm responsible for replacing the screen. Today, I witnessed... Tear the tree in the front or the back? In the back. Today, I witnessed the landscaping guy out blowing debris out of the landscaping, and he passes my place up. And there's all these little leaves. And anytime I go out my back door, my lanai door, and I come in, I'm tracking in all these little leaves from this tree that needs to be trimmed back. And that's not the first time I've seen him skip around my place. I don't know what, what do you mean he's not doing anything that you're not trimming? Or I hear him leaf blowing and raking, and I'm sitting in my living room and waiting, and he just goes on to the next. So he's blowing the leaves, but he's skipping over you. Yes. So uh, give us a call and we'll make him go back over there and do it. Okay. Thank you. You're in a, you're in a, uh, I'm in a villa. Yeah. You're in an original unit, right? Do you have a, do you have a, uh, a fence? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so your, your downspout comes out from, uh, from the roof and it stops. Down from the roof, it goes about three or four feet. If that. See what I did with mine was I bought a uh, I bought a PVC pipe and I extended it through the fence. Is that my responsibility? Well, I don't know. I, I did it. I mean, my husband would have done it too if he was yeah. still alive. But that's what I'm saying. Is that yeah. my responsibility? That's why I come over and look at it and make that determination. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Kathleen Sherman over here. Okay. Okay, burn it All right. Guys, please. Can't hear you, Use the speaker. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> um, has anybody uh, reported any break ins? No? I didn't hear anything over the summer. I heard a bike was stolen. A couple of bicycles, and then a couple of days ago, or on Saturday, was reported to me on Monday. 
And on Saturday, um, apparently somebody had their apartment front door open and the lanai door open, everything open, and the purse is missing. They were vanished. Um, her wallet, I guess, wasn't the person there was some money in it, but credit cards and stuff she had elsewhere. So that was fortunate, um, but nonetheless uh, troubling. Uh, obviously, there's a crime of opportunity. Uh, you know, something like this, though, as John was saying, leads to something like that. But we also have to take precaution ourselves and not leave the front door wide open with the purse where someone could see it or something like that. But it's easy to say that now. You know, um, beforehand, she probably done that a thousand times and never had a problem. So. So if she has the screen doors, she screen doors. Someone had to come in to August and shut them. So she did have a screen door then that was closed. Well, it wasn't locked though, was it? But that's why you call the police when you discover that and not wait till Monday because the police maybe could have gotten a finger. Did anybody ever get a fingerprint? She did call. No, he said there was too many fingerprints for Everybody should know about it and make sure they lock both locks yeah. and go out, even if it's just to take you out of the walk. So what, what I do is if I go into the shower, even if I go into the bathroom for an extended lock period of time, I lock my front door. And uh, because you don't know, you know. Nobody's got six crimes. Well, I don't mean that. I'm going to take my, uh, my gold, you know. But what I'm saying is you have to, you have to, lock, you have to be cautious. I mean, we posted signs when this was a problem that kind of provoked us to get a little bit more proactive uh, and bring in the, the safety card, I think, was kids were coming in or you know, drug addicts had people coming in and rifling through these cars looking for money. So we posted signs at the entrance of every parking lot, lock your vehicle, lock your door, protect your property. And, you know, it really helped people do it. And, um, and uh, that's an unfortunate thing that happened. I wish there was a way to know who it was if somebody had one of those ring doorbells in the video camera or something. That's another reason why we should have patrolling different responses. Well, this happened during the day, right? Yeah. So I mean, it can happen at 10 o'clock in the morning just as well as 10 o'clock at night. That tells you that. But you know what I mean. Anything else part of that? What's your name, Renee Shop. Oh, she's on there, too? Renee Shop. Oh, all right. All right, Renee, go ahead. So that was actually my condo that was um, burglarized. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> that was my condo that was burglarized on um, Saturday morning. And they did take my purse, and yes, I did not have my door locked. Hindsight. Was it open or was it just unlocked? It was my screen my, door closed. My and screen the front door, door was closed yeah. and the front door was Nothing open. Else I was, was trying to get some breeze was in. Was anything too, else dis like, disturbed? No, at all? it was a, it was definitely a crime of opportunity because they came in, they they saw my purse. I'm sure that's why they entered. Right. And I but was, they didn't touch anything else. So. No, and I'm sure they were just in and out really quick. Were you home? I you was. I was home the whole wow. morning. My, my thank my, God it wasn't anything. I mean. Well, thank God I didn't come upon them because well, right. you know, it could have been anybody here that you know it happened to. Because how many times do you do you walk out carrying garbage and have your hands full and maybe don't pull the door shut tight or lock it? You know it can happen to anybody. So for you know for people to say, oh well, you should have had your door locked. It can happen to anybody. Well, in hindsight, it's so easy to say exactly. that. You know, it's um. Exactly. Quarterback should have not thrown the interception. Of course not, yeah. right? Um, 
we have to remember that this community, as nice as it is, and how much we love it, it's such a nice community, is not parked in the best spot in town. And the surrounding areas are lower income, uh, lower income, and those people tend to get desperate at times, and desperate people do desperate things, and we have to be aware of that. We have tried to isolate ourselves from it. That, that's kind of difficult because there's nothing we can do to change what's outside the gate. Um, and for a long time, we weren't having these issues. I mean, this is one of the most unfortunate. I've heard of thank goodness well, that it wasn't because it, it happened between you know ten and eleven thirty in the morning, broad daylight. You know, and um, you know one of the things the police officer said was, "Are there cameras that would have maybe caught?" I said, "No." I, you know, I well, we have the entrance and, and the exit and the Yeah, and yeah. you know who knows if they walked in through that entrance of the front gate. Or if they drove they in, cop, we wouldn't be able to necessarily spy the person. Right. The person in the car. Right. right. So you didn't even recover the first empty zone. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I searched the whole property. Sometimes they'll empty it out and dump the uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I stumped you know, the dumpsters and everything. But um, it was a pain because, you know, if anyone has ever lost a social security <laughs> card, you are on the phone oh, yeah. for two days dealing with banks and, and you social security. Yeah, you do. <laughs> So, you know, I guess I'm here to be an advocate for let's get some cameras, or at least let's consider getting cameras, because as far as I'm concerned, we can have security 24 hours a day, and one security person is not going to be able to watch this huge community. You know, we're, as if we have cameras installed, and even some fake cameras to deter crime, that might help. We even have fake cameras that have a little solar panel that have a red light. Honestly, light so I've only real. seen a couple of cameras. Like, I've walked and I, I look and I don't really see any. So, you know, I, I think that there needs to be a bigger presence of yeah. cameras to make everybody feel safe. Because you know what? Thank goodness nothing more happened. Well, I think we can probably look into it. But one thing that we stated, and we stated this earlier this year, and that's why we changed the Safety and Security Committee to the Safety Committee, because as a community, we cannot guarantee security in Pine Ridge. Uh, everybody has a responsibility to take care of themselves somewhat. I hate to say it that way, but from a legal standpoint, we were forced to say that because we can't guarantee security. We can do as much as we can to, to try to be safe and try to make recommendations, and one of the recommendations uh, could be cameras, but we cannot guarantee security and, throughout this compound. And everything that we have from the gate to the guard to the deadbolt on your door is a deterrent. You know, a motivated individual who wants to get inside your door, you could have a lock to deadbolt until they're still going to get inside. Um, we, uh, but they're all deterrents, and the more deterrents you have, the more likely they are to move on to one where they don't have these competitors. They don't steal from them. One thing I was the quite people surprised. are going to steal anyway. Right. Yeah, you know. One thing I was quite surprised about, I guess I was not, I mean, I knew it was a bad neighborhood, but I didn't realize quite how bad until the police officer said, oh yeah, right behind the cracker barrel, just outside of our gates, there's a big, huge meth den, or, you know, crack den. Well, and I'm like, oh, I mean, really? this community is, is, is so nice. If it were 10 miles south, the values would be maybe double what they are here. You know, it's just a, just a matter of fact. So that's why you get such a tremendous value here. Um, and the fact that the veranda was put in, you know, that we're close by the veranda, it's improved a little bit, access to I-75. It's a good location, but it's surrounded by Gosh. some bad areas. Yeah. The hope is that that's turned around. I mean, we had to fight, remember just a couple years ago, we get the county, Joan, you remember you helped? And, Bob, uh, the fence on Orange River Boulevard. The thing was falling down and nobody cared. And that's the entrance to our community. And finally, we got them to replace the wooden fence. Not the best, but it's better, better than what we had by far. Yeah. Really. I just, I want. But it's almost like really a forgotten consider, area. Yeah. You know, consider yeah. the cameras because you know what? It can happen to any one of us. You know, yeah, I was stupid. I left my door open while I was home. 
but it can happen to anybody. It's actually a good advertisement too for that video doorbell. I mean, I know I'm getting one every house that I'm moving into, but uh, for about a hundred bucks, you can buy your own camera that's right at your front door, and you have 100 percent control over it. And if something like this ever were to happen, or if you're not home, like you're at North, that's, and it sets off, then you can also. That's great for but that's like your entrance. Yeah. That's great. But the way our condos are set up, it really isn't going to show like the sidewalk. So let's say somebody is in the community that doesn't belong there and maybe assaults somebody. I mean, who knows? Oh, yeah. I leave for work at 4 in the morning. It's pitch black when I leave. Yeah. I would have this you particular know. situation. If you came right on your doorbell, maybe you would have had a shot. Yeah. Good job, thank you. Thank you. All right, who's next? Uh, Mel? Where's Mel? I'm here, but somebody answered my question. Okay, that's good. All right, so the one we got left then is uh, Kathleen Sherman. I talked to Eric, and he is aware of everything. You're all set? Okay. I think that's about everybody. Is that everybody? I mean, I, okay, good. All right, so let's go on then. Um, previous meeting minutes? I move we waive the reading of the minutes. Second, all in favor, yes. Who seconded? Okay, you seconded. Right. All right, thank you. All right, the managers. Uh, Manager's report. Do you want to do that? Yeah, we have a traffic company that we want to talk about. So, when I wrote my manager report, I wrote everything in the community is, is running pretty good and, and was stable. Um, <laughs> uh, despite some minor uh, things, a couple of things that really we don't like, like what Renee, what happened to Renee. But overall, the community is stable. It uh, looks brand new, I think it looks better than it has in the time that I've worked here. Um, some of you that were here when it was brand new could tell me whether it is quite that, <laughs> we'll give it in that. But uh, we've gotten a lot of compliments, and um, you know, we thank you for all the kind words from Bruce and Pamela and I. And uh, over the past couple of years, the community has undergo undergone quite a transformation and has had a string of large projects busy one after the other between the roofing and the paving and the painting and the roofing and, and now we're getting ready to start the cycle kind of over again. Um, but we've almost totally redone the whole community and it's really showed because uh, a lot of people going rate for a villa when I started working here was about 65,000. Going rate for one now is about 150,000. So that is significant. Now, prices of the economy is doing much better than it was when I started eight years ago, but um, there isn't much property that's increased at that percentage, if you look at it that way. Um, we are going to be painting early next year all the buildings. That's coming up again in the budget. So we started interviewing a couple of painting companies. Uh, we said early Elias Brothers who just did the floors for us. Um, and we uh, are also talking to Mario's Painting. We have a bit from Florida Painting, which is another group that is um, not competitive with the other two. And uh, one other company was working on a bid that I hadn't received yet, so they may drop out or they may submit. Um, the audience, who's done it before, we're negotiating with them. The owner of the company, the main uh, Elias, the principal brother, is gonna come out and take a look at uh, what we've got a little more closely, because um, one thing that I remember from last time when we painted was Elias Brothers, where you will come in with a lower price and then hit you on the back end with all the extra things that they come across as it goes. And it can end up to be a lot spendier than you initially thought. And knowing that, we don't want to make the same mistakes that we've made. So, uh, or whether the mistakes are not yet, it has to be done. But we prefer an all in price, you know. So we, uh, Want him to come out and assess the damage and see if he can provide that at all in price so that way there's no surprises because um, we'd like to know ahead of time what we're getting into. We plan up far ahead and work really hard at that. Um, so that's 
So we'll be negotiating it maybe next month. We'll have someone from the board to vote on. Um, and we want to do it during the season because when they think of the knives, you know, a lot of you guys like to be home where your eyes painted. So um, I think it's a good idea to do it when most of the people are here. That's a project that we can do during that time. Um, on your way in tonight, I, we spent a lot of time, Scott's going to talk about the budget, but this one we spent a lot of time working on the budget and working to reach our goal, and I think everyone will be satisfied with that. Um, and I want to thank all the budget committee members and all the volunteers who uh, helped us today stuff the 462 envelopes with yeah. the budget. So that was very nice of you guys to come down and help us. Um, on your way in, if you grab your envelope, uh, make sure you sign it out on the sign-out sheet. Uh, that helps us keep the postage costs down. Each one costs a little less than $2 to mail out, so we can really save. Um, I just want to explain what the packet includes, so that way you guys know. Um, the first document is the notice of the budget meeting, which will take place a month from now, the third Wednesday in November, where uh, the proposed budget that's in the packet will either be approved or not approved by the board of directors. Um, you'll have the opportunity over this month to review it yourself, and if you have any questions, you can bring them with you at that meeting. Um, the second thing is the 2020 proposed operating reserve budget. So you'll want to take a close look at that. Um, and Scott worked really hard on it, and it's uh, turned out very well. The first meeting of the annual members meeting notice is included in that package. And the annual members meeting is the fun meeting where we get to count the votes and do the election. Uh, so we'll be reconvening the election committee at some point uh, early December. Um, and after the notice for that meeting is the intent to run for the board of directors for. There are three positions that are up for election. Um, Jim Miranda, Phil Schifano, and um, John Fricker. Their what? terms are done. Uh, their two-year terms are done. And uh, I'm not sure whether or not they are intend to go for re-election yet. Um, they'll have to submit their intent to run for the board just like any other candidate would. Um, so there's uh, three open positions. Uh, we need to submit the intent to run by November 12th. There's a time on November 13th for last minute nominations, but we've never had that. You know, usually people uh, submit and they tend to run. Um, we need a one page information sheet, a resume, why you want to be on the board, black and white that we mail out with um, that. We also have a meet the candidates night that'll be scheduled. And for those of you who can't be at the meet the candidates, we'll broadcast it on YouTube where you can watch it uh, through a link on our website. So, um, if you're interested in volunteering for the board but want to know a little more maybe about what it entails, you know, feel free, you can come and ask me or better yet, ask some of these guys up here with me and, and gals, not gal, um, they'd be happy to tell you what it's like or, or maybe answer some of your questions. Um, and I'm also available. So we decided to run turn your form in by 4 p.m. on November 12th. Last minute nominations the following day at 2 p.m. Um, background sheet. Then depending on the number of candidates, if we only have three people running, those three people will win by default. So we need a fourth person to run in order to have an election. So if we have more than three candidates, then we will have a meet the candidates night and we will have a uh, election committee and a, and, a, and a voting election. The last two flyers in the packet are directed, uh, the social club asked us to include them. One of them is scheduled, it's uh, on a pink sheet of paper uh, for the year. It kind of gives you the big points of big events <coughs> out, which um, I think is valuable so you can plan ahead your calendar, your social calendar. And uh, the blue one is a new format of how we're going to organize the sports leagues that we have, uh, mainly pertaining to bocce, shuffleboard, and cornhole. Uh, last year, we had some issue that some people were excluded and there wasn't enough time, and we want it to be done in the most fair way possible, uh, where everyone has an equal opportunity. So, uh, to read the form, uh, 
the social club worked really hard to come up with what they thought was the fairest. I read over it. I think um, it's going to work out well. And uh, so I uh, looked that over, and we're going to have a meeting on a certain day, and we're going to organize those meetings. Um, And uh, that's really what we have. I um, just wanted to thank you know, the social club. They do work really hard on those notices. The budget committee worked really hard. And the board over this past month uh, with the budget looking at it. So, um, you know, thank you guys for all the guidance and the help. And you know, everybody is uh, happy other than the small issues that I don't know. I wish we could have prevented, you know. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, treasurer report. Yeah. Okay. Hi guys. Um, the association remains on budget on the operating <coughs> side or operating expenses. Uh, we've already talked about this in other meetings, but the reserve expenditures for the roofing systems, the hallways, and the meter sheds. We, uh, we ran over on the funding. On the roofing, it was, uh, we added the repairs. Plus, it was economically, it made sense to go ahead and do the gutters. Uh, on the hallways, everybody knows about the hallways. When we ripped up the carpet, we knew we were in trouble. So it wasn't just a matter of, we were funded to replace carpet. We weren't funded to repair concrete and all of that. And with meter sheds, they were falling apart anyway. The doors were the, that high board. I was here during Irma. I ran out in a 500 mile an hour wind because that door coming off the hinges was driving me crazy. So we got good materials and we got a carpenter. We rebuilt, we're rebuilding those sheds. The doors are reinforced. The firm, that's a critical part of the building. So we spent some extra on that. As far as the funding, we'll recover that we have the surpluses that we hopefully all have in operations, but also next year's assessments. We'll cover that and we'll just roll over. And then we'll just start refunding again. again. Uh, the roofing, we don't have to worry about for another 18, 20 years. The sheds, hopefully not for another 30 years. And the hallways, hopefully never again, except to resurface them. So much for that. Uh, we did work. A lot. I'd like to thank the budget committee. We completed the 2020 budget. I don't know if anybody's mentioned. Uh, uh, we're not going to raise the fees next year. So uh, it was a little bit of a stretch to get there. Um, when I was playing with numbers, it was kind of within sight. And I sort of became obsessed with it. So I really worked with the numbers because next year, I think there's like only a 1.6% rise in social security and i think they're going to take that back anyway in medicare so it just seemed like a good time to hold the line next year is going to be a different story i don't know how it's going to go but i don't see a situation like this again but, but we did so and and that's where we are this is the you'll find it in there i tried to simplify some of the forms some of the spreadsheets, so maybe it's a little easier to read. Um, there's a couple other things for simplicity and um, formatting that I didn't add in the reserve, such as um, what we had at the beginning of 2019, plus what we put in during the year. Uh, that's in every financial report. It's also in last year's budget, but it is in the spreadsheet. I just squish the spreadsheet down a little bit to do this. Also, if you're interested, uh, there's two areas where we don't divide up the common expenses the same way. We have a formula. Condo 1 is 50%, Condo 2 is 27%, Condo 2A is 4% of the common expense, Condo 3 is 19%. Um, condo 1, Condo 2 have janitorial services for the hallways and such. So that's a different formula. That exact number is not in here. It's only the actual spreadsheet. But I can tell you, 
Wakanda 1, 40% Wakanda 2. And I can give you the exact number. Uh, also with uh, the fire alarm maintenance, and the Condo 1 and Condo 2 has those. Those are divvied up. I'm looking, I'm, somebody's supposed to tell me whether it's an actual rule to have that in the published printout. If it is an actual rule, I'll issue a one sheet with those numbers on it as an addendum to the budget as soon as I can. And then that'll all be covered in that. What's next? Accounts receivable, we're good. 12 owners, two are in attorney uh, for collections, seven persons who are in collections process and three who own small amounts. Uh, these tend to tighten up. Eric told me today one of these came in with. And one of the attorney ones is paid in full. So yeah, well, they checked. Not only one. So, these, so actually, we're in pretty good uh, shape with that. If you guys have any questions, um, all the documents, all the financial documents are always available to you shareholders. And if you have any particular questions, just ask me to that. Let me see. And just to clarify what Scott was saying with the spreadsheet, what he had condensed down, is the numbers that you see in this budget on the itemized lines are the total numbers for the community. The reason why Condo 1 is 50% of that is they're on the hook for is because Condo 1 has 232 units, which is exactly 50% of the units. The reason why Condo 2 is 27 percent to make it 27 percent. So that's why the that's why the formula is based on how number of units. The way the association was established back in the 80s, it's actually four different condo associations melded into one. Yep. So each thing, even though it's like cleaning the pool is a common expense, we break it out to four different budget centers, uh, and each each section pays their piece of the pie. Basically, yeah. one of those. You can ask questions. Has that. Their own budget? There's four different budget centers. Yeah, there's four oh. different associations. But the common one is the one that you really want to look at the most because that's the combined. But you know, it's also good to dig in, especially the one you live in, the one that you live in a little bit if you, if you wanted to. Um, mostly on the reserve side because um, that's where. Uh, you know, you'll see the, the reserve numbers are largely a function of the economy and where the market is and if there's tariffs or not and some of the things like that. The um, operating side, we have a little more control. You know, we can just tell our vendors like, no, if they want to raise or you will get somebody else. Um, so we have a little bit more control there. In fact, the operating comes in under, I believe, what we had last year. But that's, yeah. you that's where those percentages. Okay, on page two, there's a summary of all of that. And this is operating, and I cut operating, so I put more money in reserves, and then it comes out even. It may be my bad, maybe I oversimplified it too much. But the bottom line is everybody's views are still. And, uh, and I thought the first page would be the one everybody would look at before they threw it in the trash, which is how much of the fees gonna be next year. No change. But all this information is available, and this is, but I'll fix it. Certainly before we go to the events. And I think that's me. So okay, thank you. All right. The President's report, I'll take care of that now. First of all, welcome back to Pine Ridge. A little slice I have it, huh? Um, I wish Janet was here to give this report, but she she's healing up from a, a fall last week, so Ooh. we all wish her a speedy recovery. And hopefully she'll be here next month. Um, as of this month, all roofs are completed and the streets and lake path have been sealed. And I think the development looks pretty good. Um, I'd like to thank Eric for his efforts in getting everything completed, considering all the adverse weather conditions that we had during the summer. Also, landscaping throughout the neighborhood looks great, and the lighting enhancement in the uh, is 99% complete, thanks to the landscape and the safety committee and Eric's crew. The dog park is in place and being used and is running well. I went over there the other day. And it's uh, pretty clean, looks very nice, and uh, from what I understand, we have about 20 people using it. Um, and like. Uh, Scott said the budget committee um, did a great job, and uh, I think the key for what I can see is it's going to be uh, 
your assessments are going to be the same as they are this year, so we won't have any increases if it gets approved. Okay, so there's a few items of interest. Uh, we already addressed the potholes. We talked to the county on uh, getting those potholes uh, filled up with some good material so they don't continually uh, erode, and they have us uh, on their schedule. Uh, the second thing is the land south of the lake and west of the clubhouse has been purchased by Habitat for Humanity. Ah, Probably everybody knew that because I think they purchased it last spring. But presently, there are no permits hold or action being taken to build anything back there. All we know is that the land is zoned residential. I think we all agree that is early in the process and that we should not take any action legally or otherwise until permits are requested. We will then move legally to protect our access to the south end of the lake. That's it under President's report. Committee reports. I have a committee report for the safety committee. <coughs> Okay, we had a committee meeting on the 14th. Robert Pignatelli, Joseph Stephan, Ed Ricky, Donna uh, Garanza, and Eric Ray, and myself were present. John Fricky was a guest. The following items were covered. Lighting enhancement is 99% complete, like the President's report said. Robert and myself will inspect two areas in the complex that are in question that may need attention. But I think uh, from where we were a few years ago, you'll pretty much agree our lighting levels are pretty well up uh, throughout the community. And in September, a resident had their bicycle stolen from one of the bike lock, uh, racks. It was not locked. So I said, please make sure you lock up your bikes. I flipped overnight. I went by a lot of bike racks the other day, and every bike in it looked like it wasn't locked. <laughs> So uh, it just behooves you to lock it up. Also keep your vehicles locked and valuables hidden or in the vehicle at all. Or not in a vehicle at all. And like we said earlier, uh, if you're going to leave your residence, leave the door locked. Even for a, a little while. You get that feeling in your gut that something's not right. Make the call and let them check it out. It's better to be a false alarm and have no trouble than to not call thinking, well, I don't want to bother with false alarm, but it be something, you know? They like false alarms, that's what they want, you know, they want to be. The security uh, service is still patrolling. Eric schedules them on, a, on certain days, um, so there's no pattern, uh, primarily uh, on all holidays. <laughs> he tries to have that patrol varied. Uh, the, committee asked him to have them uh, patrol the east side of the lake. So we're going to go ahead and uh, loan them a golf cart with an amber beacon on it so they can uh, patrol that because that's where we usually have the breaches. Uh, we just want to make sure we get as much value as possible throughout the month. Presently the service is kept under $800 a month. Just uh talking about that too, and the hours of the security. Um, you know, they want to talk about adjusting that, but I, I will tell you, over last weekend, Saturday night, I was in the area and I drove through here by 11.30 at night, and I didn't see one person out really at all, or one car. So it's, it gets very quiet after that time. Um, it would be easier to catch somebody at that time, I guess, because it's the only person out. But um, but it's it's very very quiet. So I don't know whether or not we'll get our bank for our buck or not. All the crimes that have happened seem to happen in broad daylight. You know, that's the one. Okay, the uh, front gate visitor side has been hit a number of times during the last few months. So if you have a vendor coming in or a guest or a tenant with a fob, tell them to let the, let the car in front of them clear before they proceed because what's going to happen is that gate's going to come down. It's going to uh, 
damage their vehicle, and it's gonna get a, they're gonna get a bill from us. What happens the the gate. a lot of times it's, it's vendors for the uh, individual homeowners, and they've got you know the boss in the small truck in front and the big truck behind, and they try to call once and both drive through, and that big truck is gonna get clipped every time. You know, if he was in a little tiny convertible, maybe he would sneak underneath, but um, not gonna have one of those big moving type trucks. So one at a time, please. Okay, and then uh, one other thing is uh, usually a couple of times a year we get somebody requesting us to get into the office after hours so we can get a key because they lock themselves out. And if we don't have a key, you're out of luck. So make sure that Eric has a key to your unit. If you change the lock on it, make sure he gets a key. So if it happens, we can get in there and then we can get you in your unit. And then uh, the last thing, and this seems like it's every meeting we have, people are still running the stop sign. It might not be people in this meeting. That, that might be the problem, you know? We talk to you guys, it's probably somebody else. But please, abide by the stop sign before we have an accident. And that's it on the uh, safety committee report. Do we have any other committee reports? Landscape, please, sir. Landscape, okay. Okay, landscape committee meeting. Um, it was actually just Shannon and I had that meeting early in the season. Uh, Bruce Eric gave us a golf cart, and we go to the community to identify problems. Uh, most of our problems are in trees. And uh, Shannon took notes, and I have them. Um, serious problem we have, and we're going to have to say goodbye to some of them, are palm trees that get the fungus, I can never say. Ganoderma. Ganoderma. And we spotted at least one on Royale. It turns out there's three trees there that are going to have to go. I think this one, the big tall one back here, has it. It'll have to go. The disappointing thing about those is you can never plant them. You can never plant another palm, so we're going to have to figure out what to do about that. Uh, some of the other trees, the ball of brush trees really aren't recovering as well, and they're covered in suckers, and we'll try to do some pruning, but I'm going to have to figure out how to budget some money to do that. I saw a lot of that. The other place, the other thing we identified was uh, things like this old hedge. There's these old hedges that have aged out in some of the public common areas and they're full of like this asparagus stuff and and they just don't trim up nicely so as part of this uh, Pam gave me the work orders these are the ones for uh, new plantings new trees maybe uh, you'd like part of your landscape refreshed what we do these that are not of immediate concern we wait till we get a stack. Eric goes and does a bulk deal. And that way we get these plantings very inexpensively, more like what we can afford. You know, it's not Naples. So we'll collect these. Some of the things, these edges that we wanted to we identified, we'd like to see replaced. We'll just add the plants to that list. And then. Um, then we'll freshen up those areas so it looks more. One of the things, because I've forgotten what it used to look like, I came back and I happened to be looking at the median on the outside of the cave, which used to be all scraggly, it was flowered, but it's now all sculptured and Italian. And I just, you just don't think about it anymore because it's done. I think about it again. I was just thinking, that turned out really well. And that's the kind of thing we want to see more of. Maybe when you look down Blackberry, all you see is down to the that <coughs> sun or pond or whatever it is. Shannon suggests again you know, put like a bit of color down there. So when you look yes. around the corner, when you turn a corner, when you see something, there's always something in the eye. But because of our money situation, we do these things a little at a time as we can, and as inexpensive as we can. Oh, and changing the meeting uh, third Tuesdays now. Every third Tuesday in the clubhouse, 2 p.m., please come. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Scott. Any other committees on the report? No. Okay. So that's it on the committee reports. We do not have any old business, so we'll go on to new business. Authorize management to mail budget meeting notices 
and proposed 2020 operating and reverse reserve budgets to the association members. Does somebody want to make a motion? Does somebody want a second? I'll second it. All in favor? All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Okay, so that's it. Unless we have anything else for uh, for new business, we'll go on to the question and answer forum. Come up to the uh, podium, please. Okay, guys, please, please. This ain't the third grade. Go ahead. Um, just, I know it wasn't mentioned, but you mentioned the social club. You said thank you to the social club. One thing I want to say is at our September meeting, we heard from somebody that they did not know that the social club was open to everybody here. So I want everyone to know they can come to the social club meeting. Okay. It's not just a little committee. It's open to every tenant and owner that lives there. Yeah, one thing I would say, the stuff that Pamela and Bruce and I do is what makes this a great condo association. What makes it a great community is all the social stuff and all the friends you can make and all the great people. So that's why we want to have So when you put the notice up, maybe you should put that on there. We did that okay, for, good. The, for the October. Yeah. And, and I said it's for renters, um, owners, yeah, renters and owners. Okay. Is that go on television too? No. Come on, Kenny. No, no, no. Television isn't working, I don't think. No. Anything else, Pat? Yeah, one, one more thing about okay. traffic. The other day, I was coming in, and there was a car in front, and I stopped at the little stop sign to wait. They went through. I went up. As soon as I went up, it looked like a van, I think it was, or an SUV. I came right up behind me, and then it, it wasn't. It was going to go in through with me, and I went real, real, real. Slow when the gates open. He turned around and passed me. Oh, he did? Mm -hmm. Yeah. should have got his license plate on. Oh, well, I should have, yeah. You're probably excited about it. So. <laughs> did you give him a hand signal? No. Oh. <laughs> I said a few choice words, but he gives me okay. yeah. All right, listen, right, I wanted to mention something about that, too. And I did this last time. You're at, you're at the gate, right? And you're, you're up at the gate, or somebody's up at the gate. And you're in a hurry to get in, and you go tailgate them, and the gate opens because you have the thing on your windshield. And he didn't well, that guy up there could have nothing. He did, and he can go right in. There was nothing like that. But he was behind. He was behind me. I looked at yeah. the rearview mirror. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. I wonder if we could get that on camera. Maybe. What happened to her? Yes. It happened to Pat. Maybe it's on camera. Well, I mean, we do. We do yeah. have a camera. Okay. Two yeah. things. Two things. Safety. Okay, I go to work every morning at quarter of seven in the morning. And we have a lot of people that have dogs, and I have no problem with you having your dogs. But would you please put something reflective on you? There's been more times I come out of Green Cypress and I turn left, and I don't see you because it's foggy, especially when it's humid. I can't see you, and I could run into you and not even know you're there. I know Joe's there because Joe always has his bright shorts on when he walks. But there are people that are walking and there's no reflectors on it. Second thing, I don't think coming in the complex is a two-lane road coming in, right? It should be a one lane? That's correct. Yeah. It's a one lane. So when I come in on my side, I should stay on the right side. Well, people are doing making it as if it's a two going this way, two. Well, you got a median, right? No, 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 no. Two. It merges into one. If they're saying, they're making it like a two. I'm following where so I should. Go so right down the middle. Go the right down place. the middle. So, so, I don't know. I don't understand. So, How do you think that's a two-lane so highway was, coming in? This was uh, brought up when we installed the system. I said this exact thing. Like, here's a possibility of what could happen. And the owner of the gate company who installs a lot of these all over town said you know people figure that part out now 
a brand new person coming in, they might not realize it. That means you slow down and let them go in front of you and you go behind them. But, uh, you know, nothing has changed with the lanes, obviously. Nothing has changed. Uh, really quick, I just want to make sure that um, the fountain I've been told that that is under the landscaping committee. Now that's like. No, no, the fountain outside. Oh, the fountain now. Oh, oh, um, yeah. The are we planning life. on having that working again? Because again, I think aesthetically, that's a very nice piece coming into the community. We plan on revamping. We've been uh, yeah. working on the more larger, more critical components, but we want to have a nice entrance. Yeah. Okay. We've and already talked about it. And the it. potted uh, area that was done, we'll have new plantings and stuff put in them. Because they're empty right now. Yeah, well, we plant them. Oh, all oh, the new pots that are... Yeah. We do, yeah, we do the annuals. Yeah, I got, we do the annuals. Yeah. Okay, we need, we need to do succulents because okay. it's too... Got it. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Donna Jaressa. I want to address the roofing. Yes. I need a roof. And I was told that it's coming this year. Excuse me? The roofs. The roofing was never done. When is your roof going to be done? Yeah, is what you're it asking. It's supposed to be done, I thought, this it's year. It's like 18 years after it was done. Yeah, you're, no, you're with me over. Are you 2 or 2A? She's 2. 2A. Two 2A. Two two oh, 2A. Are we finishing 2A next year? I don't know offhand, but uh, it'll be 18 years from when your roof was done. So if your, your roof was done in 2002, we could do one in 2020. Well, she doesn't know because she has not had Yeah, that's what I mean. Though. Maybe if, after a moment. If we had a uh, schedule. I don't have my Yeah, please. Let's see, when I moved in here, which was like about three years ago, yeah. they, you know, um, the insurance company was told, that the roofs are going to be done within two years. And not every roof. Well, this is what they were told. Okay. So I don't want to have problems with the insurance companies. Well, you have insurance now, right? Yes. So what happens with the insurance company, if you go to change your insurance company, that's when they want, what do you call it? Litigation. Frankly, we're only roofing these buildings. I had litigation done and when I moved in. Okay. And they said that it would need a new roof soon. Yeah. Um, and then they questioned, and I had questioned. Yes, they're 30-year shingles, and we replace the roof every 18 years. Um, a lot of the roofs, we have a roof inspector go up and tell us, you don't need to do anything, but we still do it, because um, that's the reason why you don't need to do anything, is because you've been doing it. And, you know, so uh, by no means you're being neglected. Whatever you were on the schedule to be roofed, that's the year ago. There's a of us down the block, though, that haven't had it done. And the reason why is because you had it done sooner or more recently than the people that have had it done. Okay. It all goes by the usable life of the roof according to the reserve studies of 18 years. Um, the newer roofs are saying we get 20, but I don't know if we should change from 18. Um, so it'll be 18 years from the date that it was last time. We can verify the data we have with the permit. Okay. Scott's going to look it up for you. Probably 17 years ago. I got the schedule. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, John. <laughs> so one more thing on this security. So what, what I was really talking about, we, we're going to have people on the back perimeter and over there by, you know, where Ed Ricky lives. You know how terrible that is. <laughs> but, uh, I'm getting security. <laughs> I'm really sorry, guys. Frankie, it's not security. You remember that it's safety. So, so I think that the condos and the villas need to have cameras on the end that can actually see the sidewalks, so that if a perpetrator comes in and you can see that individual, and the cameras are all high definition now, and they're cheaper than you would ever believe. So I'm just. You know, I don't mind. I'm, I mean, I'm a younger old man. <laughs> Renee, Renee probably knows karate, so I'm not worried about her. But I'm worried about you know, old people like this that may have a problem. So what, what we need to do is really look at those cameras more, you know, for the security of everybody's welfare within the complex. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to raise the budget or anything, but... 
there's got to be a way that you can protect all the people. I, I've, protect. I've worked with law enforcement for 32 years. Uh, I actually worked at a at High Point Place training security. They spend one-tenth of their budget on security. And that's 24-7, 365. I know we don't need that because we're a close-knit security, but midnights, you know, 10 to 6, that, that is the ideal time for young delinquents to come in here. Because I used to be one of those young delinquents back in New York. So I, I'm just telling you that we really need to look at that. And the cameras are the cheapest and most inexpensive way. And I understand that Ed Rick, he's volunteering again. Well, I was just going to ask you, you John, John, would you be willing to, to work with the safety? I, 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 would, I would love to if, okay. if I'm allowed to, yes. Yeah, okay, you can do that. All right. Thank you very much. So right, thank you. Please, I, I want to make sure that everybody's safe in here. Even the guy that cheats in volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Tom. Thank you, John. Hi, hey, Tom. Thank you, Kevin. Tom Donahue and the Wizard Club. Um, a few years ago, the board um, through two committees, the Landscape Committee and primarily through the Safety Committee, planted a bunch of bougainvilleas and also Eureka Palms on the east side. Right. Eureka Palms grew like weed, and boy, they are a really good barrier. The, the um, bougainvillea were only 18 inches tall within when we planted them. Now they're about four feet tall, and the board said, well, you're going to have to be patient, but this is going to be a great barrier. And um, they mowed some of them down. They're short. They're only four feet tall now. But uh, they will be a really good barrier as they get a little bit bigger. Can, uh, be I think initially with those bougainvillea, they were planted too close to the fence line. Yeah. They don't get too much shade, and then they were moved out. That's when they started to grow. And uh, we're working on something to plant in between, like you know, the spot between the Arikas and the bougainvillea. Right. And, uh, there's a cactus type bromelia called mother in law's tongue that works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that, they get to the Eureka, they run with that, you know, and they can run into our book and read book. I like that name. It's <laughs> possible <laughs> <laughs> we've got some. Uh, there, there are about a half dozen of them that were mowed down, and there are several others that died. And we need about a dozen more to fill it in so that it's really a firm barrier. Uh, it was down at the bottom of my page, and I got in a rush because we've been here a long time. Uh, Shannon's going to be our resident bromeliad expert, and there were some things we talked about about that gap area yep. between. Because part of our thing is too the landscape is having to go around them, and that's time, and time is money, and we think about we have that verge of grass where they can just run straight down. Then between the Bogomelias and the Eurekas, and kind of get that filled in there. Very tough as a root down. But we're going to do some test beds. It's, so, it's troublesome to get things growing you know, in different spots. Yeah, so. it is. But, but there are some spots where, where the, where the Bogomelia is being built. We replace them. Yeah. Yeah. We don't end up with some of the defensive colors, some of the juicy colors. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, this is Jericho. No, I feel too Wait. Wait. I'm sorry. Easy with that thing, will you? Yeah, all right. I need to let everybody know that there has been several instances where individuals that are driving their car in the dark with no lights on them what? need to stop that. There are several instances where People could be hit, or animals that were on a leash could be hit. So be watching what you're doing, and if it's dark out, get your lights on. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.